Have you ever wondered who invented the internet or how we suddenly got the power to access the vastness of human knowledge from the comfort of our living room? What if I told you that the creator of the internet as we know it isn't a billionaire or even a centimillionaire? He's a guy who had a set of principles that changed the way the world connects probably more than anyone. Today we're diving in to the birth of this interconnected behemoth we call the internet. This tale starts with the US military. The same organization that brought you GPS and duct tape also laid the groundwork for the internet. Back in the swinging 60s, amidst the backdrop of Cold War tensions, the US Army conceptualized the ARPANET. The goal was to create a network of computers for secure communication. It was as ambitious as a putting a man on the moon and equally revolutionary. However, ARPANET was merely the caterpillar. The butterfly, the full-blown internet as we know it, came from a man named Tim Berners-Lee. And like a good protagonist in every superhero story, he didn't have a cape, he didn't fly, and he didn't possess super strength. Instead, our knight in digital armor was armed with a keyboard, some solid logic, and a truckload of genius. And what was that genius moment, you may ask? A protocol. Now, this isn't just any protocol. We're talking about HTTP, short for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, and its pal HTML, short for Hypertext Markup Language. In the simplest of terms, these are the nuts and bolts that hold the vast digital playground we call the World Wide Web together. This technology undoubtedly changed our lives with a similar impact to inventions like electricity, automobiles, and airplanes. But here's where the plot takes an unexpected twist. Our hero, Berners-Lee, didn't go on to amass the insane wealth of your average tech founder. No, instead, he was working on an open protocol designed to connect people across the globe in a free and open manner. He believed that information should be shared freely with no one person holding the keys to the kingdom. His original intention was to create a platform for information exchange democratizing knowledge. Little did he know his humble invention would morph into the digital lifeblood of the 21st century, changing the way we live, work, and even love. So buckle up, folks. We're about to dive deep into the incredible story of Tim Berners-Lee, the unsung hero of the digital era. The inventor of the World Wide Web, Sir Tim Berners-Lee. Let's start off with the background of Tim Berners-Lee. Born in London in 1955, Tim had computer science in his blood. His parents were mathematicians who worked on the first commercially built computer, the Ferranti Mark I. Growing up surrounded by discussions about algorithms and computation, it's no surprise that young Timmy found his calling in the digital realm. Fast forward to 1980 and our hero found himself at CERN, the European Physics Research Center, working as an independent contractor. The place was a veritable United Nations of science with bright minds from all over the world. But there was a problem. Sharing information was a hassle. The internet existed, but it was like an enormous library with no catalog, a total mess. Frustrated by this digital tower of Babel, Tim proposed a project based on the concept of hypertext, aiming to facilitate sharing and updating information among researchers, a side project that he named in his very own English understatement, World Wide Web. Fast forward to 1989, after several years of toiling away, Berners-Lee invented HTTP and HTML. And just like that, the web was born. This wasn't a money-making venture for Tim. He was on a mission to connect the world and make information freely accessible. HTTP was the key to sending and receiving data over the web. In simple terms, it was like the postman for the internet, delivering information packets from one point to another. Meanwhile, HTML was like the language of the internet a way to encode documents with hyperlinks, enabling them to be interconnected and navigable. When these two were put together, it was like discovering a fire for the digital age. Suddenly computers across the world could share information in an organized, reliable way, paving the way for a truly global network. Now you'd think that the guy who gave us memes, cat videos, and well, the entire internet would be swimming in a Scrooge McDuck style money vault, but hold your horses. He made a choice as radical as his invention. He decided to make his creation freely accessible with no patents and no royalties. Sir Tim, as he was knighted by Queen Elizabeth in 2004, might not be the wealthiest guy out there, but he's swimming in a pool of respect and admiration from the tech community that cares about things like tech history. 
But here's where Berners-Lee stood out from the rest. While other inventors might have looked at this revolutionary technology as a golden goose, Tim saw it as a means to democratize knowledge. His goal was never to fill his pockets, but to make information freely accessible, bridging geographical distances and breaking down cultural barriers. Imagine if instead of just giving away his invention, Timmy pulled a Zuckerberg or a Bezos and monetized his invention like Facebook, Amazon, or even Google. Had that been the case, Tim would be so rich today, we'd need a new word to describe his wealth. Trillionaire would be a woeful understatement. But as with all technology, it sometimes can morph into something different than what we intend. When Sir Tim Berners-Lee set the foundation of the internet, he envisioned it as a free open platform for sharing knowledge and bringing people together. He dreamt of a digital utopia, a kind of global library where every piece of human knowledge could be accessed at the click of a button. But as they say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Fast forward a few decades and the internet has morphed into something far beyond Tim's original blueprint. While it remains a phenomenal tool for information and connectivity, it's also become a playground for corporate power, invasive advertising, misinformation, and sometimes a disturbing lack of privacy. It's like he gifted us a park to play in and we turned it into a bustling, chaotic city for better or worse. I thought all I had to do was keep it free and open and people would do wonderful things. And there was Wikipedia and there's cats and there's you know wonderful things. In fact, if you look at, talk to people in the street now, there's been a big change. Sometimes they're frustrated by the ads, sometimes they're frustrated by not being what, knowing what's true, sometimes they're frustrated that they can't really actually work with the people to build something new as they, as they could. Moreover, the simple academic-oriented HTML has now expanded to include all sorts of multimedia and interactive elements. From simple text-based pages, we've moved to high-definition videos, immersed virtual reality experiences, and everything in between. And let's not forget the advent of social media. Sir Tim certainly didn't envision Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, but today we live in a world where hashtags have the power to start movements and viral posts can make or break reputations. As we near the end of this tale, let's pause for a moment and ponder on the fascinating journey we've embarked on. The internet birthed from Tim Berners-Lee has grown into an unruly, ever-evolving creature that's irrevocably transformed the way we live, work, and communicate. Thanks to what Tim started, you can now say mean things to me, a total stranger, in the YouTube comment section under this video, all while sitting on your toilet. And if you want to, please do. It's great for the engagement, which makes the algorithm like us more. But as for the internet's father, Tim, his name isn't plastered across high-rise buildings or scribbled on the Forbes list of billionaires. Instead, Sir Tim Berners-Lee is a knighted professor, a humble man who stands as a testament to the power of innovation, driven not by personal gain, but by a pursuit for knowledge and a desire to better the world. As we click away, send our emails, tweet our thoughts, or browse through a limitless world of information, it's important to remember the simple yet groundbreaking innovation that allows us to do so. In every line of hyperlinked text, in every URL we type, in every web page we visit, lies the legacy of a man who prioritized the greater good over personal wealth. The internet might have morphed into something far beyond its inventor's original intent, but at its heart, it remains a powerful tool for connection, education, and democratization. In the end, Sir Tim Berners-Lee didn't create the internet to build a kingdom for himself, but to give us a global village. It's a village that's vibrant, diverse, chaotic, and continually evolving. So let's honor the legacy of this digital titan by using this incredible tool to build bridges, not barriers, to share knowledge, not misinformation, and to bring us closer, not tear us apart. Today's video is sponsored by Versus AI. I chose Versus as a sponsor for this video because the founders of Versus have worked on creating their own protocol that is classified as HSML, known as hyperspace markup language, effectively a shared common language, similar to HTML, but for devices in the 3D world. The founders have been working with the IEEE and the Spatial Web Foundation on this open sourced protocol to connect devices in the physical world, like vehicles, drones, physical objects, you get the picture. Versus is working towards commercialization alongside the HSML protocol with their own proprietary operating system called the Cosm platform, which integrates AI with Internet of Things, robotics, and augmented reality in the physical world. You can sign up to try out their personal assistant beta version called GIA at the website versus.ai. The company trades on the CBOE Canada exchange under the symbol VERS. All right, everybody, if you could do me a big favor, please like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, 
Also, let us know what you think in the comment section. All right. Thanks, everybody.